Despite being classified as a minor eruption, Chile's Puyahue Cordon Call volcano continues to pump out large amounts of ash. According to Serna Giamman, the Chilean National Service of Geology and Mining, ash rose to a height of 3 miles, and blew as far as 190 miles from the volcano. Wide area satellite images show the full length of the plume, and ash covering the Argentinian plains to the east of Puyahue Cordon Call. In a string of school lockdowns to hit the country the last few weeks, this one turned out a bit strange, as per usual. Deputies fired a shot near Mission Hills High School, at a man holding a long gun Thursday prompting a school lockdown, according to the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. The deputy missed. It turns out the man was shooting at gophers. Philippe Holgan, 21, was shooting gophers outside his house on Felicia Lane in San Marcos, according to Lt. Mike Sia. Neighbors called the Sheriff's Department at about 8 a.m. after hearing shots being fired. 39 arrested at UC Berkeley Occupy Encampment Wednesday. All of the arrested demonstrators have been sent to Santa Rita County Jail for processing. All of those arrested were arrested on two charges, resisting and delaying a police officer in the performance of their duties and failure to disperse when given a dispersal order. Demonstrators at the University of California Berkeley were assaulted by police on Wednesday night for failing to leave a peaceful encampment they attempted to establish in solidarity with the nationwide Occupy Wall Street movement. Video from throughout the course of events show police attacking protesters with batons, bluntly striking them in their abdomens and elsewhere. Some footage has also surfaced in which police are clearly seen striking protesters, unprovoked, from behind. On the 10th of November, 2011, the Dallas Police Department discovered a new video of the Occupy Dallas demonstration that occurred on November 5, 2011. The video shows a Dallas police officer, who is working off-duty for Bank of America, push a demonstrator off a planner in front of a building. Chief David Brown has ordered the officer placed on restricted duty and initiated a formal investigation into the officer's actions. Just a day after the joyful spontaneity of a Gogo Bordello performance Wednesday night at City Hall Park, Thursday's shooting that police believe may have been self-inflicted spiraled into a tense confrontation between Burlington police and some protesters over access to the park. Anti-Wall Street protesters in Oakland rejected a call by the California City's police union on Friday for them to leave their encampment, creating the potential for a showdown. The police request came one day after a man was shot to death near their protest site. But Occupy Oakland demonstrators said the shooting, which took place at a public transit station at the edge of Franco Gawad Plaza on Thursday, had nothing to do with their movement. A wide-ranging coalition of consumer Public health and environmental organizations, food companies, and individuals submitted the California Right to Know Genetically Engineered Food Act to the state attorney general. The initiative requires genetically engineered foods also known as genetically modified organisms, or GMOs and foods containing GMO ingredients to be clearly labeled, similar to current labels with other nutritional information. A genetically engineered food is usually a plant or animal that has had its DNA altered at the molecular level in a lab to include genes that produce foreign compounds from other plants, animals, viruses, or bacteria. This genetic alteration is not found in nature and cannot occur naturally. Californians currently unknowingly are eating many different genetically engineered foods, because these foods are not required to be labeled. Facebook is near an agreement that will settle a case with the Federal Trade Commission by making all of its privacy settings opt-in instead of opt-out. That means that you will not share anything with anyone by default, unless you specifically choose to do so. Facebook will have to seemingly submit to privacy audits for the next 20 years, which is similar to a concession that Google made with the FTC back in March. Okay, friends. These are all data mining institutions, clearly with Google itself having major connections to CIA, etc. Even a bit of cursory research will reveal as much. 
Riot police have fired tear gas and used batons to disperse protesters angry over insufficient relief efforts after a second earthquake at eastern Turkey. An estimated 300 demonstrators chanted for the resignation of the provincial governor in a rally close to two city center hotels that collapsed during the quake. They called on the governor to resign because he had told locals it was safe for them to return to the buildings. More than 10% of cases that underwent retesting following the closure of a suburban New York crime lab earlier this year were found to have inconsistent results, a figure the state inspector general called unacceptable in a report issued Thursday. There was an investigation earlier this year after Nassau County officials closed the lab amid concerns over inaccuracies with testing in drug arrest and drunken driving cases. The U.S. State Department has ordered an environmental assessment for a new Keystone XL pipeline route, shelving the controversial issue until after the 2012 elections. The State Department will assess the potential of alternative routes in Nebraska after public concerns surfaced regarding the environmental sensitivities of the current proposed route through the Sand Hills area. Scientists researching harmful algal bloom hotspots off Southern and Central California have been awarded $821,673 for the first year of an anticipated five-year $4,076,929 project to investigate methods that could provide early warning detection of the toxic blooms, also known as red tides. The research is being conducted in partnership with two U.S. Integrated Ocean Observing System Partners, the Central and Northern California Ocean Observing System and the Southern California Coastal Ocean Observing System. The teams will combine the detection and monitoring of the toxic blooms with ocean models that can forecast ocean conditions, potentially leading to bloom predictions. As many as a dozen members of Congress and their aides took part in insider trading based on foreknowledge of market-moving information on Capitol Hill, disgraced Washington lobbyist Jack Abramoff told elite-controlled CNBC in an interview. The former lobbyist said the amounts members of Congress earned trading off their inside knowledge ranged from as little as $2,000 to as much as several hundred thousand dollars, that was claimed by one member of Congress. Abramoff declined to name the members of Congress. Using stem cells harvested from leftover animal material from slaughterhouses, Mark Post, a vascular biologist at the University of Maastricht in the Netherlands, nurtures them with a feed concocted of sugars, amino acids, lipids, minerals and all other nutrients they need to grow in the right way. So far he has produced whitish pale muscle-like strips each of them around one inch long, less than a centimeter wide and so thin as to be almost see-through. Pack enough of these together, probably around 3,000 of them in layers, throw in a few strips of lab-grown fat, and you have the world's first cultured meat burger wishes Mark Post, who hopes to unveil such a delicacy soon. Sin City is known for unusual attractions and endless partying but now visitors can learn shooting machine guns, assault rifles or vintage firearms at the world's first luxury gun lounge. So-called gun girls will teach the guests how to use the weapons on 16 lanes and in a VIP lounge with two private lanes. Machine Guns Vegas combines exotic firearms with world-class service, the manager said in a statement. A private company, listed on the stock market, has been given the right to deliver a full range of hospital services for the first time in the history of the NHS, reigniting a debate about the use of business in the health sector. Circle Healthcare, a John Lewis-style partnership valued at around £120 million, will manage the debt-laden Hinchingbrook Hospital in Huntingdon, Cambridgeshire, from February after the government signed off on a decade-long contract on Wednesday. Although private sector firms already operate units within the NHS such as Hip Replacement Centers Circle, one of Britain's most prominent healthcare providers, is the first to take over an entire hospital. Gold is back. With global investments delivering little returns, the eyes of many investors have turned to the old favorite. But the new fool's gold rush has come with a big rise in scams and confidence tricks. 
They now represent a major threat for companies and individuals and many of them take place in Africa. Occupy encampments everywhere are being hit with stigmas from every angle, and it seems that some will stop at nothing to achieve the shutting down of the clear voice that many hear, but are too afraid to say plainly. The Oregonian reports that, at a press conference at City Hall, Portland Mayor Sam Adams, standing with Chief Mike Reese and City Commissioner Nick Fish, cited the rise in crime around the encampments in ordering demonstrators out of the squares. A French court has fined energy giant EDF 1.5 million euros, and sent two of its staff to jail for spying on Greenpeace campaigners. The company is hoping to build four nuclear reactors in the UK. A court in Nanterre, near Paris, found that EDF employed security firm Cargus to spy on globalist-controlled Greenpeace as it campaigned against new reactors in France. A breakthrough is being touted so that an exciting focus for vaccine development can take place. Bill Gates must be smiling ear to ear. Researchers say they have discovered a unique microscopic channel through which malaria parasites must pass to infect red blood cells. Which means, that, like the recent flu vaccines being hailed, a future vaccine could in theory work against all strains of the deadliest mosquito-borne pathogen, according to the study published in the journal, Nature, on Thursday. Put away the Halloween costume. This is not a vampire joke. Chinese scientists at Wuhan University have been working on a genetically modified rice that can yield a human blood protein called human serum albumin, or HSA. According to Nature News, HSA yielding plants such as potatoes have been used for the last two decades, but they have been too high cost and low yield for commercial use. Rice seeds, with their high protein content and high yields, are proving to be attractive carriers of the HSA gene. Spain's civil protection for volcanic risk has closed two beaches on the island of El Hero in the Canary Islands because of potentially toxic gases emanating from an underwater volcano off the island's shore. The decision came after a technician from the country's National Geographic Institute had to seek medical treatment after he was taken ill while measuring carbon dioxide levels there the previous day, Spanish TV reported. A CME is heading for Earth. It left the sun on November 9 when a magnetic filament in the vicinity of Sunspot Complex 1342-1343 erupted. The M1-class explosion hurled a bright cloud of plasma into space. Although the eruption was not squarely aimed at Earth, the CME is likely to deliver a glancing blow to our planet's magnetic field on November 11th or 12th. NOAA forecasters estimate a 25% chance of high-latitude geomagnetic storms. For true news and info in regards to our sun, please be sure to check out the YouTube channel of Suspicious Observers, as, his two-minute news videos are quite quick and to the point, and a great jumping point for much research. Looking for a quick harp update now, the total electron content, again, is just way, way higher than normal. Um, and this is not due to any kind of solar flare or coronal mass ejection, this is just the ambient levels. Uh, going up in the daytime and down at night from this one uh, station. Uh, you can look here, high critical frequencies in the F1 and F2 layers as well. Uh, and this is just uh, really, really strong, uh, really strong ambient space weather. You can look here on the uh, VHF rheometer, uh, you can see, look at that red spike in the ionospheric absorption. And we know that uh, no solar flares uh, today, uh, no coronal mass ejections hit. We don't even need to click on the flux gate magnetometer here. You can see it's quiet. So uh, in the next uh, day or so, we should be having these coronal mass ejections hit. And it'll be interesting.